Hi, and welcome to this PowerShell quick tip video. So in this quick tip video, we're going to be taking a look at something that we've had quite a few questions about, which is Microsoft Graft. Now in this video, it is just going to be a quick tip because I don't have a sandbox environment yet to show you guys a full blown demonstration of what Microsoft Graft can do in a work style environment. Uh, so today's video is just going to be a quick tip on how to connect to Microsoft Graft using a personal account. And then we will do a graph API call. We're gonna do one using the commandlet and one which is just like a built-in commandlet that has a built-in API call into it, which we're gonna do a get Microsoft Graph user. And we're also gonna use the commandlet of invoke Microsoft Graph requests where there we're gonna specify our URI and our method to get the data back. Now, one thing that I want to just do, because a lot of you guys might have never have used Microsoft Graph, this might even be the first time that you hear uh, Microsoft Graph, depending on your level of experience in work or what environment you actually work in as well. So the first place that I would actually really, really recommend before we actually even dive into the PowerShell code for connecting to Microsoft Graph is to play around with the Graph Explorer which this is basically the GUI for what we're gonna be really working on. Um, so you can access this with developer.microsoft.com and go to the Graph Explorer tool. I'm gonna to put the link to the Graph Explorer in the description. So if you can't find it, just look down there and it will be there for you guys. Um, so what's really nice is once you sign in, you get access to your personal tenant and we can actually run queries right from here. And as you can tell, we can get all the information from my account back right here. It might be a little small. Once we get into the PowerShell code, this is the exact query that we're gonna be executing. The thing is with the personal accounts, you cannot do anything else. Like a lot of things that you can do with Microsoft Graph, which is very, very nice when it comes to automation, especially with automation of Microsoft 365 is, and even Azure as well, is you can create groups, delete groups. You can manage teams this way. Um, you can manage risky users if you're taking care of security in Azure as well. There are a slew of different things that you can do with Microsoft Graph. That's why this quick tip is just because we don't have access to that sandbox. I really, really just want to focus on that personal graph. Um, but one of the other things that's really nice is if you have a graph API call, like for example, this one here, I already have it open, but if you copy pasted this into Google, you can easily also find the Microsoft docs on all of these API calls. And even in the learn.microsoft.com, uh, if you go into graph, you will see a bunch of different things that you can do with Microsoft Graph, security, search, notes, mail. You can send mail. You can also read mail using um, graph. So there are a lot of different things that you can do. It will tell you exactly what permissions you need as well, which is awesome. So without going too deep into Microsoft Graph, let's actually go ahead and let's get started with the Microsoft Graph PowerShell. So the first step here, I already have it installed on my computer, but this is gonna be the first step that we need to do. It's gonna be an install dash module Microsoft dot graph. Now you can use the dash force that will just make sure to install it. Even if you already have it installed, it will just forcefully install it as well without prompting you. Um, and this will get you started. That might take a minute or two. So don't worry if it's taking a little bit long, it is completely normal. So the first thing that we really need to do after installing the module, of course, is signing in to Microsoft Graph. So because we are using a personal account, I am going to be doing it through the browser, but I want to show you guys all the different parameters that there are for the connect MG. Uh, Microsoft Graph call. Um, so there is a client ID, which you can specify. Uh, there is also certificate. So you can do certificate based authentication, access token uh, based authentication as well. The tenant ID, which that is the ID of your Microsoft tenant, your Microsoft Azure tenant usually um, as well. Um, so there are a lot of different ways to sign in. Usually if you're using scripts, the way that I would probably recommend to sign in is usually the certificate method, uh, which again, I can't show today because we just don't have that sandbox, um, but there are a lot of documents online, but at least this will kind of show you guys a little bit of the starting ground of where to go. 
So all we really want to do today is do a connect dash mg graph with the scopes user dot read all. Now that is the scopes that we're asking for permissions to be able to read our user basically, which we're going to be able to read our own user. So when you run this here, this is why you can't really use this in a automation style environment. You would want to use a certificate based authentication or a app ID um, with an app secret authentication. Although the app secret might not be as recommended because you're going to have to store that app secret somewhere. You can definitely store it in a vault or a Cli XML file to up that security. Um, but the certificate is definitely a very good method as well. So I'm already signed in here. We can already see my jacked programmer at outlook.com here. We're just going to click on that and it's going to say authentication complete. You can return to the application. Feel free to close this browser. We're just going to close the tab here and minimize. And here you're going to see that we have the welcome to Microsoft graph now, which is awesome. So the first thing that we can actually do here is get our user. Now, if we just do a get MG user here and we run this, we're going to notice that it's going to take a little bit of time and we're actually going to get an error. Um, we get expected comma literal or object. Now, what I find works usually best is we have to specify a user ID. Now, I like to specify usually the user ID inside of quotes. So we're going to say jacked programmer at outlook.com. And if we actually get that here, there it is. We got all the information. We got the display name, the ID, the mail, the user principal name, which is awesome. And if we just do a format list here, there's all the information from our Microsoft graph call. So we get tons of information here. Um, now, of course, this will be even more information in a work style environment. You're going to have a lot more information. You're going to have their department. You're going to have everything usually that is stored in Active Directory that you're syncing over. Or if you're only using Azure Active Directory, you're going to get all those fields as well, which is really, really nice. Now, as I said, we can actually use a invoke dash mg graph request as well. Now, this one is the one that I primarily like to use because um, it gives you a lot more flexibility. It gives you the option to provide a URI, which this is where we go back to our trusty um, either the learn.microsoft.com, Google or the graph API. Now, if we go into my profile here and we copy this URI here, and we know that it is a get method because of this here, we can go back into our code. We just paste in the URI. We put the method as get. And we can go ahead and get that information. And there it is. So. We have the OData context, we have mail, display name, ID, preferred language, um, business phones, which is empty, given name, surname, and the user principal name, which is my user, and then the mobile phone, job title, and office location. Now again, job title and office location, if you're in a work environment, not a personal account, usually you'll have information in there, which is awesome. Um, you'll also have the IDs are often useful as well for adding users to groups or anything like that as well. So that is really a very quick overlook on Microsoft Graph and how to use them. Now that invoke Microsoft Graph request commandlet, that's the one that I would really, really recommend using because if you ever wanted to do something very specific, like as an example, if we just came up and looked here and did, um, let me just take a quick look here. If we did a Google search, a graph API risky users as my example here. So here we can see list risky users and that is part of the Microsoft Graph REST API beta. 
Uh, so there is a beta version. Basically, all it changes is the URI that you're going to be using. So it provides you all these nice URIs and it provides you exactly that URI that you need to call. And if you do the PowerShell here, you're going to see snippet not available. Um, and you're going to see that the Microsoft Grass FDK uses the version one of the API. So that's where you're going to need to use that invoke Microsoft Graph request, or even sometimes um, I've seen that you might have to use the invoke web request and submit the details yourself as well, um, which that if you did, um, you can easily just look here and you already know the URI, you already know that it is a get method as well. So you don't really have anything else to pass in. As long as you're connected, you will be good to go. But most of the time, if you just use that invoke MG graph request and put in the URI, you should be good. I don't think I've ever encountered a situation where that didn't work. But if you guys have any issues, feel free to post a comment and I can check in a work environment to see and confirm that. I just cannot uh, obviously show my work environment on these YouTube videos just for privacy reasons and everything like that, which is why I'm going to try to get that sandbox set up for us as a community and hopefully be able to demonstrate a lot more graph calls um, because there are really, really cool things. You can reset MFA like MFA tokens through this way as well. If someone has forgotten their MFA or has changed phone numbers, you can change that completely through graph. Uh, you can access SharePoint lists through graph as well. That might not be the best thing to use for SharePoint lists as there are a PNP PowerShell module as well. Um, but there are a bunch of different things that you can do with the graph API. If you look for it, you could probably find a graph API call for it. So that is it for this video. Hopefully that kind of satisfies your cravings for the Microsoft graph videos while I try to get that sandbox set up. If you guys have any commandlets or any modules that you guys would like me to look at next, please let me know in the comment section down below. I'll do my best to get them. If they require um, a little bit of extra work, kind of like this Microsoft graph, which will require a sandbox, might take me a little bit of time, but I will try my best to get something out like this one for Microsoft graph, where we can just use a personal account and kind of get away with demonstrating how to connect to it and how to execute some basic commands and then do the API automation and a lot more detailed stuff a little bit later. Thank you guys for watching. Please be sure to hit that subscribe button, hit that like button. Also, don't forget to hit that notification bell to be notified when that next video comes out. And I will see you guys on the next video.